most of the physicians that talk to people uh, tell them what they what they think they know. They don't realize that it's a metabolic disease. It's not a genetic disease. So, um, and I don't think they know that. Uh, they haven't been trained. The field, majority of people in the oncology field uh, are are not aware of that. And it becomes clear uh, when they discuss this uh, with their cancer patients. So if a person doesn't really know something, that would be lack of knowledge, uh, not not related to uh, actually lying like these politicians do. Okay, so we know that. Um, the, the great tragedy in my mind is the, um, the, the therapies that are offered to cancer patients are, ba are based on the conventional knowledge that cancer is a genetic disease. Um, but when you look at radiation and poisonous chemicals, uh, we all know, everyone, even the oncologists know that that's not good. And th there, b there by the grace of God, you might survive these very, very toxic treatments. Those toxic treatments were supposed to be, have been eliminated with the promise of the genomic uh, investment in cancer. We've spent um, $100 billion on the Cancer Genome Project. The promise of the genome uh, investment has not been coming, and mm -hmm. it won't come because cancer is not a genetic disease. So, um, so we, we, we have to continue to rely on very toxic treatments for cancer because the promise of the new precision medicines and personalized therapies have, have not have not been realized. We have almost 1,700 people a day dying from cancer in this country. Mm -hmm. That is about 70 people an hour. So in this discussion that we have, 70 people will be dead from cancer, okay? And that just came out. We have cancer statistics just came out the other day, 2024 cancer statistics. And what they said is we've uh, reduced cancer deaths by 30% since 1991. And that's because the anti-smoking campaign was started in 1991. So had we all continued wow. to smoke, uh, we would have 30% more cancer deaths than we have right now. So this doesn't, this doesn't speak to new therapies for people that already have cancer. It's, it's the prevention. So if you stop smoking, you'll prevent a lot of different kinds of cancers. And people look to that as if we're making major advances in managing cancer. And the fact is we're not. It's an abysmal uh, uh, disaster. It's probably it's probably goes down as one of the greatest uh, tragedies in the history of medicine. And it's not, and, and nobody's lying to anybody. They just put all their eggs in a singular basket, and that basket has happens to have a huge hole in it. And 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 we're not we're not getting the benefits of all the billions of dollars that we have invested in this disorder. It's a, and that means so the theory under which the disease is viewed and managed is incorrect. It's a metabolic disorder. And once you realize that, we'll be able to drop the death rates by 50% in five years, but you have to uh, overturn a monstrously powerful system and paradigm. And that is not gonna happen anytime soon. You have two kinds, you have somatic mutations and you have germline mutations. So germline mutations are those that are passed down within families. And you hear about the BRCA1 and you hear Lee Frau many and you hear a variety of other of these so-called. These are inherited risk factors. Um, they are secondary risk factors. The primary risk factor is damage to the ability of the cell to generate energy with through oxygen. So when you see these mutations in families, like the BRCA1 that you hear an awful lot about because of Angelina Jolie and others mm -hmm. um, having breasts and ovaries and all this kind of stuff removed, um, as a, as a prophylactic because they carry the gene. But, but the issue is that only about 50% of the women that have that gene will actually go on to develop uh, some sort of a tumor. 50% mm -hmm. of them will not. Uh, and the answer is we're not really clear about that, but we know that every one of the women that did develop a breast tumor or an ovarian tumor, or whatever, that carried the gene, we always find that the cells are fermenting. They're using uh, energy without oxygen. So we know that's the common link for all these different cancers. Uh, whether it occurs sporadically uh, or through the germline. So uh, when we hear about cancer as a genetic disease, uh, that, that comes from the theory that, that somatic mutations cause dysregulated cell growth. So you have to say to yourself, what is this? What is cancer? It's cell division out of control. 
dysregulated cell growth. What causes that? And the answer to the, according to the National Cancer Institute, and most, it's it's uh, gene mutations in in a variety of different uh, targeted genes. But that, but we and others have shown that those mutations are not the cause; they're the effect of damaged uh, energy metabolism. So the mutations are effects; they're not the cause. So if you're constantly chasing effects, you're you're never the outcome is never going to be optimal. And when you have, oh, we're targeting this gene and that gene, all of those are downstream effects. They're not the cause. Mm -hmm. So this is why the field is locked into this uh, perpetual uh, uh, problem where you, you hear all this, but cancer is, 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 is out of control. Uh, when you have 70 people uh, an hour dying from a disease, this is an out of control situation. And it's not, and it's going to stay out of control as long as the field continues to real that uh, put uh, energy into all this uh, these gene mutations and and then they have the immunotherapies, which you hear about Keytruda, Opdivo. That's all based on the somatic mutation theory of cancer. And if the theory underlying the disorder is incorrect, those drugs are never going to be optimal in managing and reducing the death rate. That's what I want to know. Can you reduce from from 1,700 people a day to 800 people a day. That would be a huge advance. If you did that in five years, you know you're on the right track. So, uh, and and uh, right now, the system, it does not acknowledge that. They, they have no clue, not all of them, of course, but most oncologists, when you tell them it's a metabolic disorder and you can manage it using diet lifestyle issues, they, they, they don't eat, they, they say there's no evidence to support that. And the evidence, they don't read the evidence. Well, it's one thing, uh, and that's a, it's another thing. If you don't read the, re, the research material and understand it, then you remain uh, uh, ignorant of the information. And there's no way. And you're not trained in medical school to know this. You're trained that cancer is a genetic disease. You go to the National Cancer Institute website, everything, cancer is a genetic disease. And you feel like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I've inherited these genes and it's out of my control. That's wrong. Everything is, you have a lot of control over this disorder. It's just that you've been made to to give uh, uh, an opinion that's not supported by the, by the new science. Uh, we all know about um, physical toxicity. The reason, the reason why people uh, fear cancer is because they don't want to have to lose their hair and, and vomit mm -hmm. and, and all these, we call those um, physical and mental toxicities. But we also have a new form of toxicity called financial toxicity. So um, you can't believe how many uh, folks in this country that aren't well off uh, are more or less living uh, paycheck to paycheck, and then they get hit with a cancer bill for $30,000. It, it, it causes uh, families to uh, disintegrate. People commit suicide. Um, it's a tragedy of monumental proportions. And... Mm -hmm. um, it's called financial toxicity, and it's just as deadly as some of the physical toxicities that we're associated with. So why should drugs that, that don't work for so many people, uh, you should charge people only after the treatment works. You should never pay up front for any of this stuff. Uh, if it works, then you should pay. You should have some sort of a payment system. The longer you stay alive, the more you pay. You shouldn't pay $30,000, and then in a year you're dead. This doesn't make any sense. So um, we need to change the way we, we view the treat. How successful are the treatments? You go to the physician. He charges you a, a, a surgical procedure. Okay, some of this is, is, is expected, but a lot to be charged for drugs that cause you to have your hair fall out, your, your gut destroyed, and all these other horrible things. Why are you paying all this money for something that's causing you harm? Um, uh, yes, and there's a huge industry associated uh, the cancer industry is known to be one of the wealthiest. I mean, they, they make mm -hmm. billions of dollars on these drugs. But if they, if they're, okay, I, I don't think people would mind it too much if the drugs actually worked. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it, 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 why we got, as I said, we've got, we got 70 people dying this hour that we're speaking. And many of them That's have right. taken some of these drugs. So, um, and they fail uh, one after another. And, and not only that, if you do happen to survive, and believe me, there are millions of cancer survivors who have survived the so-called standard of care, but a good number of those folks now suffer from digestive, hormonal, mental, all kinds of physical mm. uh, ailments that actually reduce their survival on the planet. Mm. Uh, and you die from other things 
oh, you you were cured of your cancer, but now you you you, you die from heart disease, and you and you die from bo de bone density issues. You die you die from all these other things as a secondary effect of being treated with very very toxic uh, approaches. So, um, and that's what people don't want. They would like to be treated for for their disorder with something that's not going to be harmful. That actually makes them. Uh, uh, their outcome better. And this is what we published this press pulse where we gradually degrade the tumor slowly um, as we enhance the health and vitality of the body. We don't, there should be no hair loss. Anytime you see a, a cancer patient that's bald, why, why that person is bald? You're trying to kill the tumor cells, not the hair follicles. Right. I, I'm, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you get off target effects that you shouldn't have off target. We specifically kill tumor cells by taking away the only fuels that they use to survive, which is glucose and glutamine. And, and the people get healthy. As you're degrading the tumor, you're also getting rid of a lot of other uh, uh, collateral problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. A lot of these things go away along with the cancer. Um, the, problem, the problem right now is what I've just shared uh, with you is not known or understood by the majority of healthcare providers in this country. The science is clear. The problem is the word is not out there. And people then run off to the oncologists. And when you ask them about metabolic therapy, metabolic oncology, they don't never heard of it. So how are you, how, your very healthcare providers are almost clueless as to the biology of the disorder they're, they're treating. If they don't know that it's a metabolic disorder, that's a tragedy. Minimal exercise. The obesity epidemic has now replaced smoking as the one of the highest risk factors. If you have type 2 diabetes and you're obese, you're at super high risk for cancer. Um, this should not be a mystery to anybody. So the, uh, in fact, as I said, we've managed a lot of the, with the smoking reduction, but now we're creeping up again with the obesity epidemic. We developed the glucose ketone index calculator, which allows anybody, whatever kind of a diet you want, a Mediterranean diet, pescatarian diet, paleolithic diet, all of these different kinds of diets, carnivore diets. Um, you look at your glucose ketone index, and that tells you uh, what level of, of nutritional ketosis that you're in. So mm -hmm. we, we get people uh, into nutritional ketosis, and then we attack uh, the tumor cells using uh, off-label, off-target uh, drugs. That's another thing. Uh, the, the therapies that we use, they're... You, you, these drugs are cheap. You can't you can't make any money on them. You can't make money on any of the stuff that I'm talking about. So, um, and that's the great tragedy, and that's why it can never happen because nobody can find, figure out how to make a buck on it. But uh, we know it works, and it works really, really well. Um, but you know, there re there is a requirement here, and it's called personal discipline. Uh, yes. You have to have some level of discipline to get your glucose ketone index, yes. which which could take. Uh, on, a, on a very low carbohydrate diet, and you can use any kind of a low carb diet you'd like, it might take 14 days to get into a, a GKI. And then we jump for a few days into water only fasting. And then we hit them with the drugs, the drugs that actually hammer these tumor cells out of existence. Once you put the body in this new metabolic state, these tumor cells become extremely vulnerable to very mm. small doses of various whole array of different kinds of drugs that go after the glucose and glutamine. It's an elegant, a beautiful, non-toxic way to get rid of cancer, but it does require the patient to participate in the outcome. You're not just going to sit there and have some body, part of your body irradiated or you know chug down some sort of a toxic poison. This is a, a patient participatory activity. And I understand there are some people who, who choose to go standard of care. They don't want to take charge and if, listen, there'll always be a, an avenue for those guys. There's, listen, the, the, if you want to be irradiated uh, and this surgical mutilation, removing breasts, it was already shown years ago that there's no redeeming uh, uh, survival advantage from a lumpectomy versus a, a, a mastectomy. And yet the evidence is published, oh, yet the poor women are being uh, mutilated. Um, uh, you know, there's so many ways to go about uh, managing this disease in a ways at which are different from, from what's going on in most of the clinics today. Glucose is measured in milligrams per deciliter. Uh, ketones are measured in millimolar. 
just get your blood sugar and keep push the button, boom, on the meter, and it gives you the ratio right there. You don't have to get a paper and pen or use your brain to do the ratio calculation. <laughs> okay. So, so it just, uh, people know, oh, look at my GKI. You know, we're not 100% sure that that ratio will always be an accurate indicator of your present status because there can be right. some uh, really strange uh, metabolic uh, things happening in a person's body. Um, so th there's always other measures that should be looked at uh, along with the GKI. It's not mm. to be looked at alone as a simple entity. You okay. have to look at the blood work. You have to look at all the metabolites that are also in association uh, with that. And you start to see the overall physiology move closer and closer to what we be, what we, we be considered ideal health. Mm. At the same time, the person has a tumor and yet the body is in ideal health. Uh, and, and the the tumor now is going to be absolutely, you have a chance to really rip into those cells and kill them uh, with various yeah. dosages and timing of these drugs. This is the future. This yeah. is the management of cancer if we want to stay alive from, from this disorder. You know, it's hard, as I said, get, it, get your GKI down. Right. Any food, any food that brings you into a low GKI. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so you just take the meter, the keto mojo or whatever, and measure your GKI. And it's, it'll tell you right away what you can and cannot eat. It'll tell you right away the best or the worst food to eat. Because you'll know your body is telling you. And that could differ from one person to the next. Eat a big donut and see what it does to your GKI. If it makes it go through the roof, don't eat the donut. You know, it's not that, uh, it's not that mysterious. When you don't eat food and carbohydrates, insulin naturally goes down. Uh, mm -hmm. Carbohydrates that trigger for having insulin, insulin-like growth factor and all these other things. So when you don't eat for like a week or so, you have you become very insulin sensitive, and that's um, Averta Health uh, with Jeff Olick and and some of the other uh, individuals yes. there uh, cure type two diabetes, just doing water only fasting and 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 uh, calorie restricted ketogenic or low carbohydrate diets. Now the other thing with cancer, it's very hard sometimes to get into these low GKI zones because the treatments that you take, like radiation and chemo and some of this puts a, a huge stress. The body knows it's under tremendous stress and it releases corticosteroids, which elevate blood mm. sugar. So mm. you're battling, you're trying to keep stay massively healthy at the same time you're, you're being abused um, as opposed to someone who say, oh, I, I was just diagnosed uh, with cancer. I never knew I had it. I felt pretty good other than the, they found something and now they want me to, that's the, in my mind, that's the time you can you go on the um, metabolic approach, get your GKI really, really low, and then see what the non-invasive uh, scans uh, start to show. Uh, and if you start to see the scans and the intensity going down and being, so the cancer cells are now being uh, compromised by the whole change in the physiology of the body. And then again, it's if you can shrink it down so it's really small, uh, yes, a surgical debulking can, can potentially cure you or even a shot of radiation on a small area without disturbing too much could possibly, possibly cure you. There's a mm. lot of strategies that we can get into the, to the zone where we can bring the, bring the beast down to a manageable uh, level. And then you can possibly use an immunotherapy to kill off the few surviving cancer cells that were resistant to the metabolic approach. So there's so many new strategies for managing cancer uh, to keep people a lot healthier and with a higher quality of life. Um, this will come. This is the, what I just told you is the future. It's just yeah. that it's not known by a lot of people. That's all.